Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Jing in Beijing. And today in our program, we are continuing with our major series about Chinese civilization. Now, Chinese Bronze Age began in the Xia Dynasty some 4,000 years ago. The following Shan Dynasty was, to judge by the magnificent bronze wares from the period that have been discovered, a time of considerable prosperity. This is evident, in particular, from a site known as the Yin Ruins, Yin having been the Shang capital. The site, close to today's city of Anyang, 500 kilometers south of Beijing, contains the only fully intact tomb of a member of the Shang imperial family. The tomb of Fu Hao has yielded almost 500 pieces of exquisite bronzeware, including some vessels, the like of which had never been seen before. However, the discovery left the archaeologists wondering where had all the copper come from for making so much bronze. The emergence of bronze smelting and bronze vessels marked the time in which China entered a great bronze age that was to last more than 1,500 years through the Xia, Shang and Zhou dynasties. And it was in this period of world civilization that ancient China began to make great advances. The bronze vessels discovered in China are first in the world in terms of quantity and degree of exquisite craftsmanship. Also appearing in the bronze age, are the oracle bone inscriptions of the Shang dynasty found in the Yin ruins. These oracle bone inscriptions mark the beginning of the time in China from which objects and era can be identified by characters. Just one kilometer from the palace of the king and city of Yin, there was a Shang Dynasty bronze foundry that covered an area of 10,000 square meters. Although numerous craftsmen worked in the foundry, only the king himself could make decisions about the dynasty's output of bronze, the varieties of objects made, and their scale. Shang Dynasty craftsmen not only mastered the bronze-making arts they had inherited from their ancestors, but also developed a unique combination of pottery molds to make very large bronze vessels. They pounded sun-baked clay into pieces and mixed this clay with fine sand that contained a large amount of quartz. They then carved different designs on the clay and after drying the results became pottery molds. Because each mold could be used only once, no two bronze objects of the same design have ever been found at the Yin ruins. Bronze objects were made by turning copper ore into molten copper, which was then poured into a pottery object called a general helmet. Sometimes this object was used as a crucible. Such small-sized copper furnaces have remained in use to the present day, the only difference being that today's furnace operators must wear a special face mask to protect themselves against the heat, as the temperature of molten copper reaches more than 1,200 degrees centigrade. The large Simu Wu Ding weighs 875 kilograms, making it the largest object made of bronze excavated anywhere in the world. To maintain a large-scale bronze foundry, great quantities of ore were needed. The bronze articles unearthed from the tomb of Fu Hao alone come to a combined weight of more than 1,600 kilograms, requiring at least eight tons of copper ore. 
However, so far, no Shang Dynasty mining and smelting base has been found near the Yin ruins, and this leads us to wonder where the ore came from. These beautiful small flowers called Haizhou Xiang Ru are also known as Tung Xiao grass, which means copper rust grass. They flourish on the sites of old copper mines. This place, more than 900 kilometers from the Yin ruins, is located in today's Rui Chang city in Jiangxi province. This lone wooden pole was erected by Shang people as part of the supporting frame of a mine more than 3,000 years ago, evidence of the earliest mining and smelting site in China. Tung Lu Shan, located in Da Ye City, Hubei province to the northwest of Rui Chang, is one of the six top copper bases in China. Here, the Shang people built tunnels that led to underground mines, and working underground, the miners chose rocks bearing malachites sparkling with an emerald luster and had them sent up to the surface by means of wooden tackle. Most of the copper resources needed to make articles of bronze for the Shang capital probably originated from the Tung Lu Shan mine. As the areas along the middle reaches of the Yangtze River possessed an abundance of such strategic resources, the Shang Dynasty King would certainly have strengthened his control over this area. So, the whole Shang Dynasty King would certainly 不断的扩大不断的华夏化It is recorded many times in the oracle bone inscriptions unearthed from the Yin ruins that the Shang dynasty was once associated with southwestern Shu, which was far from Shang territory. Shu was short for what is today's Sichuan province, yet the state of Shu of ancient times is still wrapped in the mist of history. This place is called Sanxingdui. What remains at Sanxingdui is the remnants of an ancient city wall and the wall can be clearly seen. To the ancient people of Shu, the thick city wall and what it enclosed would have seemed like a fort. Today, it ushers in groups of uninvited guests who have heard that someone knocked on the gate of this wall and that it opened to reveal the secrets of an ancient kingdom. In the summer of 1986, several workers were digging through the hard soil with their hose, none of them having any idea that mixed in with the soil were cracked pieces of pottery, broken bones, and valuable objects of jade. Soon, no one was allowed to use the soil to make bricks, and the entire block of land, once part of the ancient state of Shu, was under protection. The gate to a mysterious kingdom dating back more than 3,000 years was about to be opened in what would prove to be a truly sensational discovery. When the rammed earth and the excavation pit was cleared away, a miracle of archaeology was revealed. Unearthed at San Xingdui were a large number of vessels made of gold, the wealth of a king protected by troops of roaring tigers. These tomb guardians standing underground had fulfilled their duty to the kingdom for more than 3,000 years. This 因为就是说他是在这个地方上
The bronze wares uncovered from Sanxingdui have a unique local style. But the really strange thing about Sanxingdui culture is that no mention of it has ever been found in historical records. The ancient and mysterious state of Shu had finally been found, and just like the Shang Dynasty in central China, it's had a highly developed bronze civilization. But who had been the master of the ancient state of Shu? The people of Shu had not left behind any written clues. This object, which looks rather like a steering wheel, gleams in its bronze splendor. Legend has it that the man who established the ancient state of Shu and became its first king was named Tan Tung. It is also said that he had protruding eyes and was actually called vertical eyes. However, people had never been able to imagine what these vertical eyes looked like until one day another sensational discovery was made. Is this the image of a person or an animal? The appearance of this face mask made of bronze certainly startles everyone. Completely different in shape from those unearthed from Sanxingdui, it has eyes that protrude as much as 20 centimeters. Can this be the legendary Tan Tong, the ancestor of the Shu people? Perhaps this is an image of Tan Tong made to protect the state of Shu he founded, a state that became another center of civilization far from central China. But if so, what did the ancient people of Shu use as the basis for this image of their great ancestor? In spite of the fact that a great many bronze statues had already been excavated from the ancient state of Shu, the last find greatly surprised everyone standing bronze figure 262 centimeters high. Such a huge bronze statue from this time had never been found in China or anywhere else in the world. The figure wears a high hat and his clothes are decorated with dragon and phoenix designs and various animal mask designs. But what was he holding